in the previous episode of the 1993 Kona Syndicone restoration. We treated all the scratches on the frame with rust prevention and then polished the frame to restore the paint's luster. We then worked our way through all the parts that we're going to reuse to give them a thorough service and deep cleaning and uh, now we're in a position where we can start building the bike. But first, there's one thing that's really annoying me from the last episode, this lower headset cup. It's just too rusty, so I'm gonna treat it. Um, I'm gonna use some aluminium foil and a bit of WD-40 here to remove any surface rust. Then I'm gonna use some built hamber hydrate 80 to react with the raw steel, because it's a steel cup, uh, to finish this nice even black coat and um, I've still got the rubber boot for this so I will fit it towards the end. With that finished we can get on and reinstall the headset. Now this bike is a little strange because it's got an inch and an eighth threaded headset so that's a little unusual. I actually do have a spare one but these Kona Impact uh, headsets are quite unique with the sort of extra chunky lock ring at the top and that little pinch bolt to um, to make it all clamp up and not come undone uh, is a really unique characteristic of this bike and that's the way i wanted to restore it this is going to be a very sympathetic uh restoration it's not a resto mod or anything like that so i'm trying to reuse all the unique things that made uh this kona syndicone a kona syndicone other than the frame like the stem the headset the forks um so yeah that's one of the key attributes for this restoration in my mind I actually do have a set of Manito Comp uh, forks from 94, I think, with an inch and eight threaded headset, which I could fit to this bike if I wanted to, but the Project 2 forks made by Kona are kind of iconic, so at least for now, I'm going to refit those as well. Onto the bottom bracket next. I'm actually going to reuse the bottom bracket because it felt pretty good, and I don't think it's original to the bike. I think it was a later one that's been uh, replaced at some point in time. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna liberally coat the bottom bracket in grease. Um, I, I just think it's one of those things you should do. I, it's probably a waste of grease in the reality, but uh, any chance to stop these bottom brackets getting stuck into a frame, I think it's worth doing. So in 20 years time, if I own a bike or if someone else wants to change the bottom bracket, they can. The bottom bracket itself is a UN 51 or 52, I can't remember off the top of my head. So yeah, I think that's a lot later than 1993. I guess that's sort of 96, 97, 98. The Shimano bottom brackets are strange. Um, they actually switched the sort of cartridge and sort of support side around at some point in time. And I can't quite figure out the date they did it. Obviously there's probably like XTR top of the range one did it and it dripped down through the rest of the range but yeah so I think this is a bottom bracket from the late 90s early noughties just before sort of Octolink took off after giving it a thorough service I decided that I wanted to reuse the Sugenio XD500 chain set the super shifting chain rings are in really good condition still um, I was quite tempted to polish the crank arm because it looks quite corroded and uh, not perfect but I think the patina kind of suits the overall uh, condition I'm looking to go for. The chain rings are really minty uh, but yeah as you can see there's like spots and tarnishes all over the crank arms but I think it kind of suits the, the overall aesthetic of the bike which isn't it's far from perfect there's lots of scratches and bits and pieces on the frame that are far from ideal but yeah so we um lewd up uh, the bottom bracket again we'll mix in materials here we've got aluminium and steel where these things come into contact it's best to use uh, a lot a lot of grease um, just to prevent galvanic corrosion um, yeah and just uh, talked up the um, the, uh, the bolt there and uh, these are very old-fashioned type of cranks and they have a little cover on them which i managed to not destroy taking them off Onto the wheels next, and again, I'm reusing the rims that come with the bike. They are Alex hubs with um, uh, Bontrager rims. Uh, so yeah, Trek branded rims. This is before Trek owned Bontrager. And it's got this commuter spec front tire, which is okay, but clearly not good enough. Um, so we're putting Schwabbly Billy Bonkers, because you know, tan walls, they look kind of retro. 
Um, I did think about fitting some Pana Racer smoking darts, but they don't roll particularly well and they're hideously expensive compared to the Billy Bonkers. So um, 2.25 Billy Bonkers that we went for. Stem next, and we had to reuse the Velo City stem. It's an iconic Kona branding stem, and actually I kind of wish they would bring it back. I think it looks cool as hell. Um, this one had a lot of surface corrosion inside the uh, sort of plug area, um, but when we sink it it's quite deep into the steerer, it hides a lot of that, and we treated it with built amber hydrate 80 anyhow. Um, so yeah, just clearing up excess grease here. I don't want that um, expanding plug at the bottom there to stick to the fork ever in the future, so again, plenty of grease where we have mixed materials of steel and aluminium to front galvanic corrosion. Now one of the peculiarities of this stem is the, the tightening bolt is deep deep inside the stem itself so you can't get a normal sort of talking end of the allen key in here so I'm just using a spanner to give me more leverage on the allen key. It's far from ideal but it's a way of uh, sort of working around that problem. Now when I bought this bike the top cap of the stem was missing so um, it had like a bathroom plug in there, this one. Um, so I decided to 3D print my own. It's not perfect. Um, I made it from TPU filament, uh, from FDM if you're into your printing and I think it's perfectly good for this project. I might actually redo it at some point in time but I'll do for now. Handlebars, we're going for these bright silver finished aluminium ones. These came off a Klein Pulse. Uh, I'll link that above right now if you've not seen that teardown video. That's sort of my big project for this summer. I'm waiting at the moment to paint that, repaint that frame. So the temperature needs to increase here in the UK, I think, to get adequate um, painting done. It's a bit chilly in my garage. So yeah, I'm waiting for the spring for that to increase. So yep, you'll see that bike soon. And I think these brushed aluminium bars look great on this bike. Shifters, um, we're going for the Shimano Dior Thummies. Um, I've not got any bikes with thummies at the moment, so I was keen to reuse these. I cleaned them up, sorted out any sort of surface rust on the bolts, and I thought they looked great. Now, brake levers, we're going for some Diacomp SS6s. Uh, the bike would have come with SS5s, but when I bought the bike, it was had some horrible plasticky levers. Um, if you've not seen the teardown of the original bike, it was like a full dad bike, horrible mode spec. And we're going for a sort of working class cross country race whip it with this build um yeah so these uh diacomp ss5s are the replacements for the uh, diacomp ss6s are the replacements for the ss5s uh, i'm going to put some bar end bungs here um just because of the grips i'm using they haven't got an integrated bung into them so yeah to fit those in there, stop your core sampling yourself in the future and the grips we're going to go for are these uh uri uh, grips in this sort of tan biscuity brown color with the accessories on this bike i'm going to go for a sort of a tan brown look to them so i'm trying to find stuff that would match the sidewalls on the billy bonkers that was the idea and these uri grips were available on amazon um, they weren't cheap though i think they're about 18 pounds so yeah not super cheap for like a pretty much ancient and non-technical grip but i think it looks it looks right and they're kind of a period correct grip as well which is sort of the sympathetic uh, restoration direction we're taking this bike. And fitting the grips, I'm going to the classic route of using hairspray and just yeah, sliding them off whilst the hairspray is still wet and leaving them 24 hours before use. Um, and I faced the Uri logo sort of towards the front because meh, I don't know, that looks kind of cool to me. Brakes next, and uh, as you might suspect, I'm going to reuse the Alex calipers that come on this bike. I've pre-fitted them with some Lifeline sort of XTR-esque um, replaceable cartridge brake pads um, and yeah they went on fine but as with all sort of um, cantilever type brake blocks I hate fitting cantilever type brake blocks they're so fiddly it's just one of those ones I guess if you're doing it all the time you sort of develop your own technique but I personally find these things the most fiddly things in the world you need free hands and uh, there's probably a technique I should look at YouTube, but yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I really don't like fitting cantilever type or style brake blocks. The V-brake ones are always easier to me, but that's the sort of era I grew up in was with V-brakes. I think I've only had one bike with cantilevers uh, when I was uh, the, the actual age. Um, so yeah, the, 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 they're just fiddly brake blocks, I think, and the V-brakes were a much superior design, but people will argue about that for sure. For the rear mech, we're going to go with the Alex that the bike came with. Um, I've 
took this part and restored it. It's a little bit rough around the edges. It's all functionally fine, but this is a couple of scratches I touched up with a Sharpie. Um, I was considering putting an XT because I've got an XT on here floating around in my garage, but I think I'll keep it original because the rest of the bike is relatively original. Front mech is a band clamp uh, top, a uh, bottom pull uh, Dior DX, which again was original to the bike. We've cleaned it up, gave it a full service, and it's ready to go again. It's perfectly fine. There's no slop in it, and it, you know, it functions great for a front mech. One thing I did find kind of annoying is there's a spacer to lift the uh, sort of seat tube bottle away from the the bike, but that's missing when I bought the bike. So. I'm going to have to find a space or I'll just put a blank Allen key in there to sort it out. This is going to only be a recreational bike anyhow at the best time, so I think I'll sort that out towards the end of the build. Uh, onto a chain now and I'm just going to fit a SRAM 7.8 speed chain, the basic PC850 or something like that. It's got a quick link on it, more importantly, uh, so I think quick links make everything easier. Uh, I know you're not meant to reuse them, but I tend to reuse them a couple of times. Um, this chain I've been playing around with um, hot immersion wax treating so it's super clean and should run clean for a long time uh, especially with the sort of medium to little use this bike will get in reality. Pedals I'm going to go for the Shimano Alex pedals I've pulled off another bike uh, that'll be probably the next video on the channel it's a mystery bike I still don't know what it is um, so yeah Shimano Dior DX I tried to service these these are really hard pedals to service <laughs> I don't think they're meant to be serviceable but they suit all the rest of the Alex components on the bike, so we're going to go for them. Onto the cables and setting everything else up now. Um, I really hate filming doing the cables on the bike, so it's all a bit chopped up to try to make it as entertaining as possible. I, I think it's a really boring job, but one of those ones is really fiddly and takes, takes time to do accurately. Um, so I've been fitting all these cables. These are all Clark's cables. I just buy a big box of... 100 cables or whatever it is from 25 30 pounds from Amazon is much more cost effective than doing it any other way. On the top tube here, I put a length of inner cable on it to stop it sort of scratching the top tube, and it had one originally, so I think it works with a doggy collar, which is like the bit around the seat tube to pass the cable through better. And yeah, um, everything got set up fine, there was no major problems. Uh, it's just one of those fiddly jobs. Uh, I think if you're a professional bike mechanic, you probably have your sort of methodologies in your mind much more accurate than I do as an amateur mechanic um, but yeah <laughs> I guess it's one of those ones practice makes perfect with uh, cabling for sure uh, but I just take my time with it and it's just a really boring thing to film so I'm kind of fast forwarding through it all. I forgot to mention when I was uh, doing the rear wheel that I've reused the cassette the bike came with uh, so it matches the chain set quite well it's one of the older type uh, cassette bodies with uh, like a 13 or 14 uh, two uh, small cogs, so it's not a super small one, so it suits the larger chainring sizes. Brakes now, uh, straddle cable, I'm reusing the Shimano straddle cables that come with the bike. I've actually got some other straddle cables somewhere, uh, sort of nicer hanger ones with the aluminium bit in the middle, but I can't find them anywhere, I've misplaced them, so I might fit those at a later date. These ones look okay, but I'm not a super fan of them, they're kind of easy to set up though, so it'll do for now um, and it's nice and original I guess so that sort of bonus within the sort of scheme of the bike we we're going for. On to the saddle next and I'm fitting this sort of light tan uh, Sella Italia flight titanium. I got this from Amazon for quite a good deal but I also bought a Sella Italia turbo. I couldn't make my mind up. I put up a pole and everybody said flight so flight's what we're going with and I actually think it suits the colour scheme better than the turbo I bought so flight it is. Uh, I have a problem with the saddle, I'll talk about it at the end of the video. One last thing is a nice treat for the bike is I'm removing all these sort of hex head bolts and then going to fit some stainless steel cap heads. Um, I've got a nice little bottle uh, holder for this bike. Um, it's a Ringlet style one, it's coming from the mystery bike which will be the next uh, tear down on the channel. Um, it was a nice little cheeky buy the mystery bike. It has some nice but peculiar bits on it. Um, yeah, so it's a Sun Ringlet style bottle cage. I'm assuming it's not a Sun Ringlet cage. I'm assuming it's probably a Tektro one, uh, especially from the bike it came from. But the sort of gun metal -y finish looks really nice. Sort of um, gun metal anodized, grey anodized. 
and it's got that sort of brushed or rolled milled finish to it from the sheet metal bent part. Uh, it's got all the bits for it um, and I'm fitting it with some stainless steel bolts on it. Uh, it looks period correct and it's very sympathetic to the build of this bike I think so yeah I'm quite stoked with it. But I did have some problems uh, putting it together. It's a fiddly thing to put together and it kind of felt like this lower bolt was cross threading when I started to install it. It's kind of a hard bottle cage to install. You need like a super stubby allen key or a ball end on uh, an angle. So it's, it's far from ideal because you don't have direct access to the, to the bolt. So I just took my time with it. I felt like the bolt start wasn't engaging properly. So I took a couple of stabs at uh, <laughs> installing it to be fair. Like I say, not a pro mechanic. I'm just doing these up with the torque wrench because it's actually a, the best tool for the job. Uh, it's ratcheting makes it easy to get onto the, the bolts. After I build a bike, I go around and torque all the bolts um, just to make sure they're done up and I have like have a safety catch mechanism in my mind. It just it suits my paranoia. Um, I don't do it on camera because it takes a million camera angles to film every single click of the torque wrench. You can see some of my other videos if you don't believe me, I do do it. Um, and I'm just going to fit some stainless steel cap heads uh, to the seat tube bottles here. I'm not planning to use a second bottle so I don't need a spacer. And that's about it. Let's take it outside and stare at it, shall we? So let's have a talk about this build then shall we. I think it's come up phenomenal. I really adore the way this bike looks with the silver to green fade and the sort of tan brown accessories setting everything off. The Diacomp SS6 brake levers are great. I think they really complement the bike. They're kind of similar to the original SS5s that the bike would have come with. I uh, wish if it had the SS5s I would have kept them but it didn't, it has some horrible plastic things. The Project 2s, the triple butted Project 2s look great. Um, I am quite tempted to switch it to suspension fork, period correct one, but maybe not. I screwed up the flight titanium. I'm so mad at myself. I've got a little bit of grease on there from handling a different set of handlebars and I touched the saddle and put a grease spot on it. And that mark is from where I've cleaned it off. I'm th furious at myself for that. The Alex pedals, I might not keep. They feel a little rough, they're hard to service and not very easy to service either so yeah, I might change those in the future but overall I'm super stoked with the aesthetic of this bike I think it looks perfect it's like a working class 90s XC race machine and that's what I was going for I'm really stoked with the way it came out it's got a couple more views here this is at uh, the ruins of Minster Level Abbey, Abbey or something like that anyhow Minster Level in uh, West Oxfordshire uh, I've actually had this bike finished for a few weeks now but the weather's been so terrible at the weekends, I've not been able to get outside to film anything. And it's absolutely bogging everywhere. So <laughs> everywhere I would you normally film is terrible. Um, but yeah, I've got a few snaps on a sunny Friday evening, uh, just gone. So yeah, I've been waiting on this sort of finishing of the video <laughs> to, to get it out to you. So it's a bit later than I anticipated. But yeah, I think the bike looks great. I finally got outside, it rides really nice. Um, I think I might make a few tweaks in the future, but I've got some other projects to get on with first, so yeah. Thank you for watching this, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the future uh, for another few projects. I've got a mystery bike coming next, a Cannondale Super V, the Klein you've already seen being torn down, and I've got a brand new trail bike I've got all the pits ready for, so I'll see you in the next video. Thanks you for watching.